I'd like to welcome to the stage U.S. House of Representative Derek Kilmer from Washington 6th District. Uh, he's going to share a little bit about himself, and then he's going to be um, inviting uh, uh, Lawrence Lerner and Joseph Williams. So with that, welcome uh, Congressman Kilmer. Hey, thanks. Hello. We got it. Uh, it's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, I was asked to give an update on what's happening in our nation's capital on this subject. I admit I'm always reticent to give an update from Washington, D.C. Um, near lunchtime. Uh, but I'm bump. Thank you, everyone. Uh, um, so I'm going to cover uh, two quick things today. First, I want to um, I want to talk about what you're doing and why I think it's a winner for uh, Washington State's economy uh, and for opening the door of economic opportunity. And second, I want to talk about some of the things that are relevant from a policy standpoint that may be. Uh, uh, important to you and to the future of um, blockchain opportunities in our in our region. So first, just some context. Um, before I started serving in Congress, I uh, worked up here for McKinsey and Company and McKinsey's high tech practice, and then uh, worked in Tacoma in economic development where I got to know Janine Toronto. I will confess, um, as in an attempt to get smart on this subject, I've spent uh, a good amount of time with Janine. I've spent a fair amount of time uh, you know, watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts and listening to John Oliver. Uh, and um, I feel like I can pass the test now, but maybe not ace the test. And um, maybe that's a good starting point for some of the challenges when it comes to uh, policy development in this space. Um, when I worked in economic development, we had a sign up in our office that said, we are competing with everyone, everywhere, every day, forever which I always found kind of intimidating, but I actually think it's a pretty good ethic, uh, not just for local economic developers in Tacoma, but for our country too. And the reality is, if we play our cards right, um, we can make sure that Washington State becomes a hub for innovation and entre entrepreneurship in this arena. Um, there are dozens of companies in our state already who are doing work in this arena, um, including uh, some in my congressional district. Uh, and that's a good start, but there's a lot of room to grow. And what, what um, economic projections tell us is there's an expectation of a lot of economic opportunity in this space. So that's why events like this are important. Now, beyond that, um, we know we are competing on multiple fronts. First, with our allies for job opportunities in this space. They've recognized that, uh, uh, that there's economic upside here. Um, but we're, and as a consequence, they're making investments in workforce development uh, and in even uh, looking at um, government services that would leverage these technologies as, a, as an effort to open some doors here. We're also competing with our adversaries, though. We know that we have significant security issues within this country uh, when it comes to our financial services, uh, when it comes to um, our power grid, and uh, even when it comes to our voting systems. And I think that suggests that, again, there's opportunities here. I look at my main job as a member of Congress as trying to create more economic opportunities for more people in more places. And that looks different as if you're out in Forks where I was yesterday than if you're here in Seattle. But one common denominator is the need for a capable workforce. Um, a lot more needs to be done. Uh, as I've met with companies that work in this arena, we consistently hear that there is just a mad dash for talent. And that's something where policymakers can have some say. Uh, can have some say. We've just introduced uh, a bill that's, um, that's focused somewhat on this. I'm happy to talk uh, some about that if folks want to. But um, I, I, there's an article in Forbes that said, even though the average sal salary of a blockchain engineer in Silicon Valley is $158,000, programmers are still in short supply and in high demand. And that same report highlighted how companies are running bounties, uh, bounty programs, and paying outside developers. Um, to find security flaws in their token, in part because they lack the full-time staff to do it themselves. And to me, this is where good, thoughtful, uh, bipartisan public policy could play a role in trying to drive more people into this uh, arena. Um, there's a bunch of stuff we could do on that front. Um, there's a ticking clock, so I won't go into all of this. But you know, everything from trying to encourage more computer science in our high schools to trying to make sure the college is more affordable to even looking at technology apprenticeship programs, which um, we've got some effort in Congress trying to rethink how apprenticeship happens in this country and also open that door in the tech arena as well. Uh, 
beyond that, government needs to be part of the play here. Government is, um, is notoriously slow to adopt new technologies. Congress is certainly not a legislative juggernaut these days. And so um, more broadly, government writ, writ large has some opportunity in this space. Um, and you see a massive need. You saw in 2015, the Office of Personnel Management uh, had a hack that meant that literally millions of Americans had their personal information stolen. Um, over uh, 4.2 million individual personnel files, 5.6 million digital images of government employee fingerprints, which could be used to compromise our personnel uh, at home and abroad. Um, so we have to rethink things uh, when it comes to how government does business as well. That means, um, and this is germane to, to the comments made by the last panel, um, policy development in burgeoning arenas like this can happen in two different ways. It can happen with you or it can happen to you. And I think it's much more thoughtful, and it's why events like this are so important, that policy development and regulation happen with you. Uh, uh, and that's why I'm a member of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus, which is trying to shine more light on this and, and educate policymakers as to what blockchain is and what its be benefits are and encourage a more collaborative approach between industry and government. Um, it's why I serve on the Appropriations Committee and we're looking at how, uh, with what government buys, it can look at using new technologies in a more thoughtful way. I'm just going to mention one other quick thing, and then I'm going to invite up our other panelists. Um, in March, the U.S. Joint Economic Committee did a report uh, to policymakers regarding opportunities in this space. And um, it, it called for a few things. One, to the last point, it called for greater collaboration between government and industry on this front. Uh, it said uh, that there should be greater discussion about how blockchain technologies could be integrated into the government services um, provided at the federal level so service can be provided in a better and more secure way. Um, my hope is that that is the start of a conversation in our nation's capital on this front.